a warm welcome to everyone present today in shmalkal and technic talks and today will be our first uh, presentation on design and implementation of prototype for smart home automation by saurabh naik and uh, we are looking forward for more presentations from everyone and in the future we will also have many presentations from company so it will be uh, beneficial for all of us to involve in the shmalkal and technic talks and i think we can proceed towards the start of the presentation and so we can take over now yeah yeah okay thank you jay badrinath so first of all the people or uh, the students who don't know me uh, i am saurabh naik from shmakhalin university and i come from india so i am in the mechatronics and robotics engineering course so i completed my master thesis few few weeks ago on 4th of may i completed and i gave my final Uh, presentation so over here today we will look over uh, to the thesis why what exactly i have done into the thesis what were my ideas and what i have implemented into it so let's move on further um, yeah so uh, from the title slide you all have might got an idea what exactly i have done in the presentation which says a smart home automation system to develop a prototype so yes i have developed a smart home automation system where as you can see in the image uh, in front of you so in the first image over here we have a, a tablet uh, from which a person can control the light on to the tablets and in the room the light would be automatically controlled in the second image over here we have a mobile phone where the lights and the fans are getting controlled uh, from the mobile phone only the difference between both of them is like over here we have a, a tablet and over here we have a mobile phone so now exactly how does it work now now what happens is this tablet is connected to a microcontroller over there in the behind and the microcontroller is connected to the light so as you move and move any input from over here the mic microcontroller gets the signal and the microcontroller sends the signal to the actuator and uh, the light gets on and off so there there's no rocket science behind it so now the thing is like uh, we uh, the young generation can like can do these things but how old people can manage over these things like they are not so talented or they don't know about how exactly we should go on like or they uh, from my grandmother she can't even turn on the bluetooth into the uh, mobile phone so these people are not so familiar with this, such technologies so my motivation uh, in this uh, video was like uh, so in in this master thesis what exactly uh, i did was i implemented a good idea about how uh, i can help these old people to like uh, easily connect the smart home um, from the mobile phones or not exactly from the mobile phone like only the sensors and actuators i have not only implemented Implemented it. I have not only wrote the thesis on the word file and nothing like that, but I have also designed a very good prototype, which you can see over here in front of you. So in this, I have implemented total of eight different sensors. From which this is the fingerprint sensor, this is the garage sensor, and more seven different things, which we would talk about later in more depth into the next slides. So this was the short introduction to my uh, smart home automation system. What I have exactly done, and over here in this slide we would be looking about how what all implementations I have done into the uh, smart home automation system. What eight uh, implementations I have done into it. So the first implementation what I have done is over here you can see a fingerprint sensor. So over here once the person comes and he can once he gets out from the car, no need to get out from the car. When the old people comes, he can just press his a uh, finger onto the sensor and he can like maybe uh, press the gate open uh, but uh, option over here and the gate would be automatically open i can also i will uh, at the end of the slide i will show you a proper working of this sensor second i have a infrared sensor over here this is the infrared sensor and uh, i have some garage doors uh, which would be automatically open detecting detecting the person uh, so the presence of the person so once the person comes in front of it which is car the gate would be automatically open and he can go inside it So third, I have a RFID sensor where the person doesn't need to carry any keys or anything uh, to the room. He just needs to press the card over here on the RFID module, and the gate would be automatically open, and he can easily go inside it. Over here, at the fourth, I have a infrared receiver sensor. Where this is the infrared receiver sensor, which is controlled by a remote control, which can be also controlled by any other remote control like TV, DVD player, CD player, and etc. 
for the fist uh, over here i have a pir sensor which i have installed it in the kitchen where the lights would be automatically on detecting the motion uh, inside the uh, detecting the motion of the person inside the kitchen so sixth i have a ultrasonic sensor uh, which i have placed uh, over here the, as you can see and uh, the person is sitting in front of him so the lights are automatically turned on for the seventh i have a temperature sensor which is uh, placed inside the room as the temperature changes like uh, when the temperature goes below 30 degree celsius sorry when the temperature goes above 30 degree celsius the fan over here uh, like uh, go, turns on automatically and once the temperature goes below 30 degree celsius the temperature uh, goes below and the fans will, will automatically go, go off at the 8 i have a ldr sensor over here it's not quite clear but yeah you can see a, this this is a ldr light dependent sensor uh, which would be automatically detect the darkness and brightness and automatically it can controls the street lights into the system so these are all the eight implementation i have done in my master thesis project and wrote uh, the thesis now the point comes how was it possible for me to achieve all the objectives uh, all these objectives from start from like uh, from scratch to the uh, uh, proper prototype so this uh, this for the this this for all my ideas what i have done so first of all we uh, what i did i i like first research the web i went to the ideas what ideas i can do i went to my professor professor frank shoulder i discussed with him these are all my ideas these are or my 10 to 15 ideas what i can implement then uh, i and professor sorted out that uh, we can go with this ideas for the run so the idea sorted out what the eight ideas which i have already implemented and the project planning system uh, i calculated the time and cost in this my time was really important i wanted to complete it in very few i don't have so much of time was not having so much of time to complete the thesis so i completed very soon and uh, i also did on uh, this project planning i also calculated the cost like how much cost would be required to do because i have also uh, made a prototype a small prototype over here in designing phase like what i did b- before going to the actual design i made a uh, i made a, a rough handed sketch on to the paper and uh, then i made it on uh, actual design into solid work software then uh, then i take took the slide uh, files from the solid work software and i uh, went for 3d printing like uh, this 3d printing development was like really a task for me because my uh, the files which were which i were having in my solid work software were like very big and huge enough so they were not able to print it in 1 cm like they were like 300 mm by 400 mm and the printers available in the uh, universities are not so good like not like not good exactly the sizes are not so uh, better which we have so i got i got i discussed with the professor and i got the option uh, which we have high capable printers in the university also then third uh, i did the assembling of the mechanical parts where i used the uh, lab available in the university uh, the workshop lab where i did, fitted my 3d printed product onto the wood base, base plate then i shifted to the electronic lab where i installed all the sensors all the actuators the wires into the model then after i wrote the arduino c++ programming uh, onto the arduino ide software and then finally i were able to achieve the validation verification and fulfillment of the product like uh, for example um, as a, as you saw in the fingerprint sensor if i put the finger i need the output that my gate should be open so in this system uh, in this block i tested all the um, devices and all the sensor are the per- working perfectly uh, good or not then now coming to the logic diagram exactly what exactly is happening to the microcontrollers and what electronics i have used inside it first i have used four microcontrollers which are programmed uh, via computer as i told uh, arduino ide i have used to program it then mm-hmm. i have used uh, eight different type of sensors which are getting controlled to eight different types of actuators over here and actually and uh, microcontroller is not able to provide a sufficient amount of uh, power to all the sensors and all the actuators so i am using a power supply to give a external supply to all the sensors and all the actuators so now uh, in this uh, thing, in this topic i would be describing why i have used a fingerprint sensor what are the benefits what exactly were uh, the things in my mind so first of all why i have used the fingerprint sensor what are the advantages of it so firstly uh, 
the advantage of the fingerprint sensor is like uh, when we have old people in the house to take care for the old people there are many people like there are maids uh, there are gardener the the young children the young young persons there are many people who come to the house and they go out of the house so we need someone over here to like open the gate and to close the gate so in this sensor i have also defined 25 different fingerprints which can be uh, stored into the in, uh, stored into this fingerprint sensor so like uh, if the maid wants to uh, enter the house she doesn't need to like uh, every time press the bell and the, the old man has to come out and he have to open it instead he, she just needs to put her finger onto the fingerprint sensor and the door would be automatically open no need to disturb the old people which are sitting inside the house second uh, now exactly what is happening behind the fingerprint sensor like what all uh, like inside the module what are the processes like when i uh, power on the module i start the module it will uh, find the fingerprint sensor like sometime it's uh, we have some wiring issues and like the fingerprint sensor is not found to the audio so if the sensor is not found it will display the message to check the wires and it will repeat the process and it will end the process like if, uh, if correct the wires it will repeat the process and arduino will again get the signal and the process will be end and second phase we have is the if we get the fingerprint sensor the sensor is found then uh, it will wait for the user to put the finger onto the fingerprint sensor now in this we also have two cases so once the fingerprint would be matched would be matched and second it would not be matched so uh, in uh, if the processing fingerprint is not matched the process would uh, it would repeat the process or the process would be automatically ended so if the fingers are matched what will exactly will happen it will open the gate and turn on the green light i will show you this in short into the uh, video i have a nice video of it uh, to the last of the slide over here just understand the process what exactly is happening inside the sensor over here uh, the gate after 5 seconds the gate would be automatically closed and the process would be ended so this is a normal flow chart of the fingerprint module second the mechanical design like how i have designed it and what software i have used as i told you i have designed it on solid work software so this is the module which i have designed on like this is a case i can say not module exactly this is the case which i have designed on solid work software and i have 3d printed this one are the, uh, the printers which are available in the university so first of all uh, this is the 3d printed part the case actually look like this and this are the rack and pinion mechanism like to for this what i am using is i am controlling the uh, motor rotational movement into a linear motion so i have uh, i have also designed this in uh, in the solid works software and i have 3d printed it you can also look into my project which is like into the professor shodel's lab we can really really look at this so now exactly uh, what is happening into the electronics like this is the arduino and how the wirings and all the things are connected we will learn in this session i will tell you how i have connected all the things so first of all i would like to tell you about the fingerprint sensor how exactly the fingerprint sensor works so over here what exactly happen is if you place your finger inside this there is a prism inside the fingerprint sensor which will enlarge your finger and there is there's a led light present into the fingerprint sensor which will enlarge your fingerprint in actual into the uh, module and there would be a camera which will take uh, which will take a photo of your enlarged fingerprint sensor into the module itself everything is happening into the module and it will match that photo with the actual photo which is stored into the module and if the uh, if the this is matched if the photos are matched then from here it will send a signal to the microcontroller which is arduino it will send over here the signals if the fingers are matched the arduino will write the uh, servo motor like right what happens right means it will turn on the servo motor and with the help of servo motor i have put the uh, servo motor onto the rack and pinion mechanism the rotational movement will be converted into the linear uh, linear motion and of course i am also using a lcd display to uh, display all this process which is happening inside the microcontroller and into the uh, into the fingerprint module so everything can be displayed over here and uh, i am using a power supply to power the servo motors the fingerprint sensors and to the arduino because arduino is not cap capable to provide a large amount of power a large amount of current because it's only able to provide up to i think uh, 500 milliampere
uh, yeah, 500 milliampere. And for servometer, we need more milliampere of current. Yes, so uh, as I told you in start, I have a proper video of each and every sensor which I have put into the prototype. So over here, I have a short video of each and every sensor, what I have done, what exactly is happening behind each and every sensor. So we can have a look over here. Over here. Is it uh, audible? Can you hear the voice? Um, no, the voice is not audible. Uh, okay, so I will explain. So here, as you can see, uh, the uh, the gate is open over here. Um, just a minute, I will like. Sorry for the technical issues. Something wrong, wrong with the audio. No problem. Yeah, I will explain you what exactly is going on. So this is the first fingerprint module. So once I press uh, the open gate, open button over here, um, and it's, it, it found the the sensor is found. Now it's, it's it will wait over here. Once I press the gate open button, it will ask to place the finger. So once I place the finger, the gate is opened over here, as you can see. Now. The second thing, as I told you, I can even install 25 different fingers into the sensor. So we can enroll a new finger from here. Once this is pressed, it will ask the location where we have to place the finger. So over here, we can place a location at which location we have to store the finger. So from here, press OK, and it will ask to press the finger, uh, put the finger. So once the finger is installed, it will ask to remove again, put, just follow the instruction on the screen, and the finger is stored. Now we have to just go to the gate open and we have to put the same finger which we have used to store the finger. So gate is opened. So this is the second infrared sensor module where this is the sensor. Uh, once the person comes in, in front of it, the gates are automatically opened. And the gates are opened till the time the person is inside the carriage. Once it comes out, the gates are closed. So this is the infrared sensor. Over here, this is the third radio frequency identification sensor. Once we put the white, uh, the card in front of the sensor, the gate would be automatically opened with a light and there's also alarm, but alarm cannot be heard. And second is the, uh, if we put an unauthorized card, so this is unauthorized card. So the red light goes on over here and the gate would not be open. And the fourth, we have an infrared receiver sensor, which is controlled by a remote control. Uh, it will show a remote, yeah. So over here, once I press a button on the remote controller, so the LED, uh, the coffee machine goes on. If I press another button from my remote controller, the microwave will go on over here. Yeah, you can have a look over here. So for the next thing, we have a PIR sensor installed in the kitchen, where it, it depends it depend on the motion of the presence of the person. When the person is inside the, uh, inside the room, see, and the lights goes on. And it will remain on until the person is moving inside the kitchen and is out, the lights are off. Over here, this is the la uh, se second last TV sensor, like ultrasonic sensor, which I've used it for the TV. So once the person is standing or sitting in front of it, the TV would automatically go on. This is the LED I'm using to show the TV. If he moves, the lights are off. Over here, uh, I have a temperature and humidity control sensor and I'm triggering it with a shoulder gun to um, reach it to 30, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. So once it reaches 30 degrees Celsius, the fan automatically goes on. And once the temperature goes below 30 degrees Celsius, the fan would automatically go off after a few seconds. So it should go on. Right now, it's, the temperature is triggered to more than 30 degrees Celsius, maybe 32, 33 degrees around. And now the temperature will slowly drop down and the fan will automatically go off. Mm, should go off. Mm -hmm. Maybe a few seconds more. Mm -hmm. The fan got off automatically. This is the last LDR sensor where I have used it on the carriage, which would automatically depend the darkness and the lightness, which is, uh, yeah, see, uh, once it's dark, the lights automatically got on, or the lights are on. And once again, it's bright, the lights automatically go off. See, the lights are off. So uh, in short, this is uh, these are all the eight sensors I have used uh, into the uh, prototype, which I have done. 
so in the last slide or till up till now i have talked about what all things and sensors i have used into the uh, module or into the prototype and but i have more ideas in my mind which can be like uh, implemented into the prototype which which would really help the old people so the first idea what i have is i have a solar panel which can be installed onto the box about the top about the uh, electronics box so the thing is we don't need to use the power externally from the power source we can directly use the power from the uh, this uh, from the solar panel second i have uh, idea in mind to replace the servo motor with the stepper motor as you as you saw in the video the previous video the gate was only open like about 10 mm so if we use the stepper motor we can even open the gate more like if we can run the motor and the gate the continuous mechanism will go more forward and the gate would be automatically open for the third i have idea in mind about installing a automatic curtains control by which the curtains would be automatically go or like go up and down depending upon the darkness and the lightness or the brightness we have like depending on the morning and night then for the fourth i have exhaust, the idea to install a exhaust exhaust fan into the kitchen where the smoke and all would be automatically exhausted out of the kitchen for the fifth one i have idea to install a robot into the kitchen which would automatically pick up the things into the kitchen and it can maybe give the old people like uh, opening the drawers or picking up some small uh, things from here and giving to the old people at the last uh, i have a idea to do a 3d printing design of like if you saw into the in uh, if you saw in my prototype i have only designed one level if any one of you is interested to do a thesis what you can what you can do is you can install a good uh, second layer uh, into the solid works and you can 3d print it 3d print it and you can uh, put into the um, prototype and you can install all this uh, the four things into the, into the second layer and maybe you can if you have more ideas you can put into the uh, second uh, second floor yeah so that's all from my side Mm, this is all the things that what i have done